I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. today is a portion of Psalm 103, verses 8 through 13, beginning on page 733 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us read it in unison. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow, slow to, to anger, anger and great, and of great kindness. He will, will not, not always, always accuse us, us nor will he keep his anger forever. forever. He, he has, has not dealt, dealt with us according to our, to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our, our wickedness. wickedness. The heavens, heavens are high, high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As, as far as the east is from the west, as so far, far has he moved our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong we did him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave us instructions before he died. 
Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of God, of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to harm me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all who fully convinced in your own mind those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Those also who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to the Lord, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live for ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. 
Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Gospel of Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy seven times. For this is the reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then this fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw himself into prison until the day he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will do also to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may recall that last week's gospel revealed Jesus teaching on how to handle disagreements within the church. He had laid out what appeared to be a step-by-step -step list of rules and then concluded it that if all those efforts didn't achieve the goal of getting the offenders back in the fold, then treat them as pagans and tax collectors. That was the surprise ending. 
For if we remember how Jesus actually treated those that were considered outcasts from society, then Jesus was actually encouraging us to treat all people, even those people, with hospitality, dignity, and respect. Perhaps not the answer that we were all hoping for. Well, today's reading is a continuation of that lesson, and Jesus is now teaching about forgiveness, the core of our Christian beliefs, something we're always encouraged to embody within our lives, for it's a foundational part of our identity as Christ followers. Peter asks Jesus, Lord, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Peter thinks, I imagine that he's being pretty generous with that number. And in the Jewish tradition, seven is a holy number, a perfect number. I do believe in following Jesus. Peter knows he needs to be able to forgive more than simply once or twice, but how human of him to wonder, shouldn't there be a limit? Some kind of formula or rule that says once someone has crossed that line, that point of no return, can't we stop forgiving then? Do we really need to keep bending over backwards again and again? And Jesus' answer is once again awkwardly clear. Peter, not seven times, but 77 times. Don't you just hate that? No limits on forgiveness. No excuse to turn our backs on one another. No limits on being forgiving towards those annoying people who are always stirring things up, always disagreeing with us. Can't there just please be some wiggle room, at least with those who we vehemently disagree with? The truth is that whether Jesus' answer about forgiveness is translated as 77 or 70 times 7, the response always remains the same. When can we stop forgiving one another? Never. Now, I do think I need to mention that this forgiveness text has been used, has been used at times within the church in some pretty horrific situations. Situations like encouraging a wife to stay with her abusive husband because she needs to forgive him. I want to be clear. I'm not talking about that situation. For this text, Jesus is talking about disagreements within communities of faith, not individual situations. But there's something important for us to hear now, especially considering the divisiveness of our society today. We really do need to know how to deal with disagreements, especially strong disagreements about significant concerns. And if we look to Paul's letter to the Romans, we get some real help on understanding how to remain within community, even in troubling and divisive times. Paul's letter is referring to issues that may seem really petty to our modern ears, concerns about food purity and honoring the right religious holiday, but these in the first century were not minor squabbles. In those days of the early church, these issues were perceived as matters of fidelity to scripture, serious, 
spiritual and theological issues that were dividing those who sincerely wanted to faithfully serve Jesus as Lord. Both sides had spent considerable time thinking out their reasoning for feeling the way that they should practice their faith in one way or another. But as these disagreements escalated, some would look with disdain on others, knowing even more firmly that their own way of thinking was right. It was a situation that could destroy the young church. Immovable opinions, divisiveness, it should sound familiar to us. And I imagine that all of us at some point have heard something along these lines. How can that person claim to be a Christian and support that candidate or that political platform? or that policy. And it's not just politics, for we even have Christian conflicts over interpreting scripture in regards to teaching, creation versus evolution, or a woman's place in church leadership, or whether all are really welcome these are disagreements that can and have broken communities because each side is so sure that it's those others that are so deeply wrong. Paul certainly has his opinions, but he gives us some good guidance about handling difficulties. But ironically, similar to Jesus, his answer to those difficult questions is not what was expected. Paul doesn't decide who's right or wrong. He doesn't judge, but rather tells them to look to the Lord, to turn towards Jesus and focus instead on what a Christian life of grace is really all about. For when we're so busy treating one another with disdain and judging another's actions, we're actually forgetting what it means to live our lives in Christ. Paul reminds that the community, the entire community, that we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves if we live we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Everything Christians do is done not in relation to us as individuals alone, but in relation to Christ, in relation to the body for Christ's sake. And it is through Christ that we can find unity in spite of our differences. We are simply not required as Christians to be in lockstep with one another. But Jesus does challenge us to live into radical hospitality, compassionate caring, and gracious support of one another. He challenges us to examine our lives, clearly seeing how our actions and our inactions actually reflect our desire and commitment to serve him by respecting the dignity of every human being. And that does mean that we should ask ourselves some really tough questions. Do we see the issues of the poor and oppressed around us? And as we see them, do we share generously of the gifts that we have been given? Or is what we give or what we do simply with what's 
left over. Left over money, left over time. What is it that we do when we see the poor and oppressed? Do we turn away in disinterest when there are issues that don't impact us directly but do untold harm to others, like the truth of systemic racism and economic injustice that too many do confront each and every day. What do we do? Do we seek to learn more? Do we seek to get involved? The spirit stretches us to come to know who we are and who we are not. Stretches us to understand that all are God's beloved children and all are equal members of the body of Christ. And that God and God alone is God and we are not. Remembering that it is not up to us to judge. As Christ's own, we accept that Jesus is present with us. Present with us right now, today, encouraging us to stay in relationship, to commit to civil conversations, to working through, together through the real difficulties of our own time. Jesus is present with us, encouraging us to build community, to love one another as Jesus loves us, accepting and welcoming all, willing to forgive as we have been forgiven over and over again. We all need God's help to keep God's work clearly before us, humbly asking forgiveness for the arrogance and hatred which can infect our human hearts. We need God's help to break down those walls that separate us and unite us in bonds of love and truth. We need God's help to work through our struggles and confusion and to lead us to accomplish God's purposes here on earth. I encourage us all to pray to ask the Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come, lead us, guide us, show us Jesus' way of forgiveness, healing, reconciliation, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Our service continues with the Apostles' Creed, found on page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. of the people are adapted from prayers developed by the National Cathedral for this difficult time in our nation. O oh God, our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble in this challenging and uncertain time of global pandemic and spiritual crisis, we come before you offering our prayers on behalf of those in need, the church and the world for the church, that it may serve as a beacon of hope to a suffering world. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Robert, our bishop, our priests, Bonnie and Shirley, Janet, our archdeacon, Arthur, our deacon, and all who minister in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for all affected 
by coronavirus around the world, for those who are sick with the virus, grant them your healing grace for caregivers and healthcare workers who care for loved ones and the needs of the public, for scientists and researchers who work towards eradicating this virus. We ask that you grant strength, courage, and protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant the leaders of our nation the strength and the will to humbly act with wisdom and compassion in service to all. Help the leaders of all nations to work together for the common good. Help us all, Lord, to break down the barriers that divide us, that bonds of trust may be strengthened to benefit the entire human family. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Remove the presence of fear and anxiety from our hearts, that confident in your providence, we may be generous in sharing our resources. Grant that your people may reflect your love by ministering to the most vulnerable among us, seeking justice, dignity, and peace for all people. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we work to be a help to be your healing hands and feet to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick in mind, body, and spirit, lifting up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with a general thanksgiving on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and spread through you to others, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.